Hi there. In this topic we're going to look at how to work out the range and interquartile range of a data set. Okay, now it's very important that we understand exactly what the range is and basically the range tells us how spread out the data is. So it's a measure of variance in the data. Now, if I show you this data set that I have here on a number line, I'll give you some idea of what the range is. So what, what I'm interested in is how spread out the data is. In other words, I want to know what is the gap between the biggest and smallest point in the data. That will tell me how spread out it is. And if we see this data point here is 10, this data point here is 2, that means the data is spread out over a space of 8. So in other words, what we've done is we've done the biggest value, take away the smallest value, and that gives us 8. Let's have a look at another example. So again, we have a data set here, and I'm interested in working out the range. So if I show you the data set on a number line, Again, I'm interested in how spread out is this data. So I want to know what's the space between the biggest value and the smallest value. And if we look, the biggest value is 39. The smallest value is 13. That means the gap in between, the space in between, is going to be 39, the biggest value. Take away 13. Take away the smallest value which gives us 26. So this data is spread out over 26 spaces. Okay, here's a few for you to have a go at. So see if you can work out the range for these data sets here. All right, hopefully you've had a go at those. Here are your solutions. Okay, let's have a look at now what the interquartile range is. Okay, so like I said before, the range will tell us how spread out the data is. Now, however, it's not always the best measure to use. Let me show you why. Suppose I've got a data set here and I'm interested in knowing how spread out it is. So let's take a look at what the data set looks like on a number line. There we have it there. Now, if I come along and work out the range of this data set, the range tells me that the data is spread out that's 31 and that's 3 so it's telling me the range the range would be 28 but you can clearly see from the diagram here that it's not a true representation of how spread out the data is because most of the data is down here we have one extreme value all the way up here that seems to be telling us that the data is spread out over a large uh, area so it's not the best measure to use. This is why we use something called the interquartile range, which will tell us about how spread out the middle part of the data is. So let me show you how to work it out. So we've got our data set here, and to find the interquartile range, we're gonna need a couple of things. We're gonna need something called the upper quartile. The upper quartile. quartile. We're going to need the lower quartile. And if I find the difference between the upper quartile and the lower quartile, that will tell us the interquartile range. Now let me show you how we, how we find the upper quartile and lower quartile. First thing I always like to do is work out exactly where the median is. So if you've watched the video on how to find the median, this should be fairly straightforward. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13 data points. That means our median is going to be the 7th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So there's our median. And now to find the upper quartile, what I do is I look at all the data to the right of the median. So the upper quartile is going to be found somewhere in here. The lower quartile is going to be found everywhere to the left of the median, so somewhere here. Right, and the upper quartile is basically the median 
of everything to the right of the median. So the median of, we'll call it the upper half. So if I look at this data set here, how would I find the median of this? It's going to be between 12 and 13. We've got six data points. So the median of this data set would be between these two, which is going to be 12.5. So that's my upper quartile. The lower quartile is going to be everything to the left. So I'm going to find the median of this data set here. So between 3 and 8, find the median of that, which is right in here. That's 5.5. So to work out the interquartile range, I'm going to do 12.5. I'm going to take away 5.5. And that tells me that the interquartile range is 7. So let's just draw this onto our diagram. So it was between 5.5, which is here, and 12.5, which is right there. So it's a much better representation of how spread out the data is. So the interquartile range was 7. Okay, let's have a look at another couple of examples. So we had a data set here, and what I've done is I've ordered it. First thing I'm going to do is work out the median. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 data points. That means the median is going to be here. It's the fifth data point, so that's my median. The upper quartile is going to be found by getting the median of everything that's right of the median. The, the lower quartile will be found by getting the median of everything that's left of the median. So the median of this data set here in green is going to be 15. That's our upper quartile. The median of everything that's here is going to be 6.5. So that's our lower quartile. So the interquartile range is the upper quartile. Take away the lower quartile, which gives us 15. Take away 6.5, which gives us 8.5. Second example here, again, find the median first of all. We've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 pieces of data. And if you've watched the video on how to find the median, this should be okay. 10 pieces of data, that means it's going to be between the 5th and 6th. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so it's in between here. So our median is found there. That means, let's have a look at what exactly is the median. The median is going to be 11. The median is going to be 11. Now I want to find the median of everything that's right of this. So including the 13, I want to find the median of this part. And then including the 9, I want to find the median of this part. OK, so the median of this data set is going to be 16. So that's the upper quartile. The lower quartile is going to be 5. So our interquartile range is the upper quartile, take away the lower quartile. So 16, take away 5, gives us 11. So that data is has a variance of 11 when we measure the interquartile range. OK, three examples for you to have a go at. See if you can work out the interquartile range. Um, do remember to put the data in order before you work it out. OK, hopefully you've had a go at those. Here are your solutions. So 9, 12, and 36. Right, that's all from me. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. Hopefully you found it useful. Um, best of luck with revision, and I'll talk to you again sometime. Take it easy.